In our number 10 spot we have Superman or UFO. You may not know this, but all of the top secret government information gets declassified after 25 years. Yes, after it's basically useless to know as I'm sure there is much more relevant information to note. But sometimes, every so often, the government drops us little breadcrumbs to keep us on our toes. Whether the CIA is okay with it, well, we will never know. But earlier this year, 2022, a press conference was held to speak about some recent footage showing unidentifiable objects in the sky. This first video shows an object in the sky that's just sort of floating by and then all of a sudden it zooms out of frame. The government has put more money into the study of this unidentifiable aerial object in the last while, but they still have no idea what is flying in this video. Is it not a bird or plane? And no, it is not Superman, I wish. Only of course, if it's Henry Cavill though. Boy is he dreamy. This footage was out to the public more than a year ago before the Pentagon revealed that it's legitimate and they probably only did so because of the pressure from the public to tell the truth. In our number 9 spot we have the US Navy UFO footage. Again. <laughs> Apparently the US Navy recorded some aerial footage where you see triangles flashing in the sky. The footage is recorded with night vision goggles and it came right after the Navy reported a number of unidentifiable objects in the area off the US coast. What exactly these objects are remains unsolved. Clearly they are UFOs, but of course the CIA and the government will do everything they can to avoid saying those words. If it ain't from this planet then it must be from somewhere else. I bet you an alien will actually land here at some point and they'll still be hesitant to admit the truth. An unidentifiable being was seen walking around, they'll say. In our number 8 spot we have Kenny Veach. This is a video of a guy by the name of Kenny Veach who went missing after going for a hike near the infamous Area 51. This video gained some popularity because in it, Kenny described that he was searching for a mysterious cave that he once came across where he felt a very very strange force field around it. He described how he felt like he was getting hot from the inside and as he got closer to it, it got worse and so he quickly ran away. In this video, he's on the hunt for the cave again, but after the video was posted, Kenny went missing. He was on a three day hiking trip to find this cave when suddenly everyone stopped hearing from him. There are many conspiracy theories over this. Some say he found the cave and if it really did have that force field around it, then it could have have obliterated him. People believe that this cave and force field is linked to the mysteriousness of Area 51. Even though Kenny's girlfriend shared that Kenny had depression and suspects that he took his own life, we don't know if that's real or not, as the CIA could be covering up for the fact that Kenny found a way into Area 51. It's super sus that everyone seemingly on to something just takes their own life. In our number 7 spot we have Isaac Cappy. Isaac Cappy is an American actor that was best known for being in Thor and a bunch of other prominent productions. He's also best known for being a Hollywood whistleblower and speaking about what goes on in Hollywood. You know, the Harvey Weinstein goings on, that kind of thing. Calling out such names as Seth Green and Steven Spielberg, Isaac started to receive death threats and spoke about how he might be killed. Then all of a sudden, he made a video talking about how there's now darkness within him and that this video would be his last video. He also spoke about how he was not thinking about taking his own life, in case anyone says that he is. Which is what makes this video even more curious. There is much speculation as to whether he ended up taking his own life or whether he was actually killed. All that's clear is this last video of him and all of his YouTube content has been suppressed online. Why? Perhaps because they don't want what he previously spoke about to be public knowledge. Perhaps. In our number 6 spot we have Obama's security shapeshifter. In 2012, at the US-Israel policy conference, President Obama was making a speech and while he was doing so, the cameras caught something very extraordinary. Every so often the cameras would pan out into the audience and show the audience of course, but also the security guards. In one shot, the camera catches one of the bodyguards from behind, looking completely different than he did from the front. We see a bald man with 
no ears and a pointy chin. His nose looks short and rounded and his eyes appear to be dark and sunken in. Most think that because it was so dark and crowded that people would have missed this and that the camera caught this shapeshifter in a blip of a moment in its true form. But of course, this footage has been suppressed from the public and people believe the CIA is concerned with this getting out because it confirms an alien race. In our number 5 spot we have the time traveler from 1938. In this clip we see a group of girls walking and talking and one of the girls in particular is walking and talking into what looks to be a cell phone. Yes, a cell phone in 1938. The first cell phone is only known to have been invented in 1973 so the fact that she's talking on what looks to be a flip phone is impossible. Right? Well, even though this video has made its rounds online, it's still quite suppressed and it's surprising how people have still not seen it. Could it possibly be due to the fact that it exposes that time travel may exist? That would certainly be concerning to the CIA. Which brings me to our number four spot, the 1928 Time Traveler. This video clip is from an older movie and time than the Time Traveler clip before, but it is no less suspicious. It is yet another clip that has been suppressed due to the nature of it possibly being concerning to the CIA or anyone wanting time travel to be covered up. It's a clip from a Charlie Chaplin movie called The Circus, where a rather famous fancy dressed woman is talking into a device that is being held to her ear. Now you could say, could that not be a walkie talkie if not a cell phone? Nope. Even the walkie talkie wasn't invented until the 30s. This woman is without a doubt talking into a device held to her ear and so if it is not a portable phone, then I have no idea what it is. What do you think she's holding in her hand and talking to? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number 3 spot we have the alleyway shapeshifter. Okay, this is one of the craziest videos I have ever seen of a shapeshifter and it's wild to me that this video has been suppressed. Well, maybe not wild because I guess the shapeshifters clearly don't want people to know that they exist and so, you know, they throw themselves into movie plots like Captain Marvel so you don't think twice about the idea of their existence and you chalk it up to an idea being something that you just see in movies. So I suppose it's not that surprising that this video is not more known. Anyways, here we have footage of a person that goes into an alleyway that is semi lit and stands still and then what appears to be a dark shadow leaves its body and walks away and the person remains frozen. This clip has been heavily debated for some time now but apparently it's completely authentic and kinda unexplainable. Of course the CIA would be concerned about it. In our number 2 spot we have the NBC shapeshifter. This is a crazy clip from 1995 that is one of the first reptile men clips you can find on the internet. If you haven't ever heard of the theory of the reptile man, well it goes like this. People believe that as far back as the ancient Mesopotamia times that reptile people have existed among us humans. A lot of people believe that Hollywood is specifically where a lot of them reside. Anyways, this is a clip of an NBC reporter from the 90s by the name of Isaiah Carey who was in the middle of filming when he swallowed a grasshopper. If you zoom in to the point where he swallows it, you can observe him having an abnormally large, somewhat pointy tongue and the color is slightly green. The reporter turned away from the camera right as this happened. Most people think that he turned away from the camera to hide his tongue, which is possible, but one could argue that it's more likely because this is something so gross and embarrassing that happened on live TV. Do you think this is a reptile man in Perhaps the CIA has suppressed this video due to the fact that it could reveal this alien race? Let me know in the comment section down below. In our number one spot, we have the fast. UFO. This is more footage that the US government released showing an unidentifiable object in the sky. In this footage you actually see an object moving in the sky and we can kind of pick up on the fact that it's an unusual shape. This particular UFO is moving pretty fast and the camera is having a hard time keeping up. There's no question though that this is something that we've never seen before. The Pentagon wouldn't have released it if it didn't feel that it has validity. This was the final of the three Pentagon videos that were declassified and shared with us common folk. Oh, why thank you government for telling us that it's possible that alien life has come to earth. As if we didn't already know this and as if we are not aware of the fact that you definitely have more footage that you're keeping from us, CIA. In our number 10 spot we have Rahman Manuel. Chicago Mayor Rahman Manuel may be a shapeshifter reptile. 
I'll let you decide. In September 2012, during a press conference, viewers noticed that his eyes seemed to transform into, well, I'm not quite sure I know how to describe this because it's terrifying. <laughs> Around his eyes, we see darkness of some sort and suddenly his actual eyes become enlarged. Honestly, whatever happened wasn't human. <laughs> Did he reveal himself as a shapeshifter reptile? I'm thinking yes. If you're enjoying this video so far, smash that like button as it'll really help us out. In our number nine spot, we have Timothy Geithner. Former secretary to the treasurer, Timothy Geithner, has been accused of being a shapeshifter. Why? Well, because there's some weird footage of him possibly doing just that. Footage was taken of him at a press conference sitting and listening to the speaker when all of a sudden, something starts happening to his right eye. A weird pattern pattern that honestly looks like a pattern that you would see on a butterfly wing starts to form around his eye, sort of cupping it. It seems that it happens for a few seconds before he realizes it and tries to cover it up by touching the area and in an instant, it's gone. No one can deny that the footage is rather odd, especially as he touches the area and poof. It's magically gone. It is super possible that we have a butterfly shapeshifter on our hands. Imagine. <laughs> if I could be a shapeshifter, that's what I would want to be. Something with wings. Probably a fairy. That would be great. In our number eight spot, we have US General David Petruis. On June 15, 2010, the US General David Petruis appeared to faint during a conference, but at one point, though, his face appeared to be, well, not human. Human. The footage of this one does appear to be a tad blurry, but it does seem like something has happened to his face. His face looks like it's you know deformed, and the person that was looking at him and talking before he fainted did look a tad scared. But it could have been because he could see something was wrong. So there's that. But also, at one point, somebody stood up and conveniently blocked the camera from seeing him. So that's sus. But honestly, the footage for this one is too blurry for me to say, yeah, probs are reptiles. But the people that filmed it and shared it definitely said that they saw something that day and it did not look human. In our number seven spot, we have Lady Gaga. Okay, Lady Gaga is an interesting one because there is a video that seemingly shows something going on with her eyes, but also she literally said on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert that she, quote, has always liked to shapeshift. Very sus, Gaga. The viewers of the show thought that it was a very interesting choice of words, and so many thought that there was a bit of truth to what she said, as if the energy around the word held more weight. I don't know. Certainly there are so many people that believe that Lady Gaga has had contact with the devil, and so it would make sense if she was a shapeshifter. Remember that time she suspended something in the air with her magical force field? <laughs> okay, but for real, is she a magical devil-like being? or a shapeshifter. Would love to know your vote in the comment section below. <laughs> in our number six spot, we have Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle, actress turned literal princess when she married Prince Harry, has had quite some speculation around her over being a robot. <laughs> Now I've heard many things, including reptilian, and some people believe something has just, you know, replaced her. But the robot shapeshifter is an interesting theory. It started when a clip went viral over Harry and Meghan wearing masks to promote Madame Tussauds' new Harry and Meghan edition. But what made everyone feel the creeps is not just the fact that their facial expressions are unsettling, but also because Meghan is not blinking. Terrifying. Whereas Harry apparently was. Anyways, I think that this got everyone to start theorizing that even though this is a mask, she may actually be a shapeshifter robot, and you know what? I don't blame them. <laughs> We're probs living in iRobot and don't even know it. In our number five spot, we have President Bush. Now, this is a clip of Papa Bush, the 41st president of the US, speaking in an interview, and his eyes seem to change. For those of you who don't live in North America, uh, there is a George Bush senior and junior, and they both became president of the US. Anyways, this clip is of George senior, aka Papa Bush, and most people are in agreement that he is 
absolutely a reptilian. I mean, at this point, I'm starting to be convinced that all the politicians are, but who knows? Maybe the whole world is. Maybe I am. Honestly, I wish I could shapeshift. Then I would just shapeshift myself into a passenger that has a ticket to board a flight to Paris and peace out of here. You know what I mean? Anyways, in this clip, his eyes definitely form into slits, and there's no doubt that if this clip is real, and so many say that it is, then you know, he's definitely not human. And at number four spot, we have Eileen Wernos. Eileen Wernos, who is known as an American serial killer, did a number of interviews before she was executed on October 9th, 2002. During a number number of her interviews, people claimed to have seen some weird shape shifting happening. This is a clip of an interview that she did where her eyes appeared to show that infamous reptile slit. You know, there are so many people that believe that sometimes shapeshifters are responsible for some of the worst crimes in the world, and then they just, you know, shapeshift out of prison afterwards after taking over the body of humans. That's definitely an interesting theory. I mean, regardless, clearly Eileen was evil, so even if she She's not a shapeshifter. I'm sure someone could make a case for her being possessed by a demon. In our number three spot, we have Reptile Woman. This woman has been dubbed Reptile Woman for pretty obvious reasons. <laughs> the footage that was taken of this mystery woman surfaced online and was apparently not altered in any way. The footage seems quite normal until it's broken down frame by frame, and suddenly it's as if you see a different person. Her hands look different, her back, her face, and her eyes. It's fascinating. I I personally wish the footage was easier to see as it's not fully convincing me looking at something so blurry. It just makes me feel like it's been altered, but who knows? I may be wrong, and it sure seems like a lot of people believe that it's real. There have been a few people that have tried to debunk it, and truly I think I'm with them on their analysis. This one is too blurry for me to think that it's possibly real, but whatever. It might be. In our number two spot, we have M.W. Jeffrey Black Hodgson. Let's call him Jeff. You know, for short. <laughs> so Jeff is the grand master of the Masons in Massachusetts. Yeah, if you don't know anything about the Masons, then definitely have a Google sesh later tonight. That's a whole other rabbit hole in itself. But yeah, if you know anything about the Masons, then you probably won't be surprised that they are on this list. The grand master, the big guy calling the shots, is in this video, and he certainly shows signs of being a shapeshifter. From his eyes suddenly showing slits to his skin apparently showing evidence, there are a lot of people that believe that this guy is a shapeshifter. And in our number one spot, we have Britney Spears. Okay, this one I refuse to believe is real, because I love her. God, I do not want to believe it, but the footage certainly makes you think that it's possible that she's a shapeshifter, or that a shapeshifter at some point had taken over her body. That to me would check out more when you think of everything that she has been fighting for recently in terms of her freedom and gaining full control of her body back again. Who knows, perhaps there is way more to it than we can imagine. I just love her though, so I refuse to believe that she was born a reptile. Anyways, in this shot, her eyes seemingly show slits at times, just like a lot of the other footage that we've shown, and this would point to some kind of reptile living within her. In our number 10 spot, we have the Queen of England. Okay, your girl is British, and being so, us Brits just have a soft spot for the Queen, but apparently the rest of the world doesn't, and everybody seemingly thinks she's a shapeshifter, reptilian hybrid. So that was news to me. Not only just the queen, but a lot of people speculate over the entire royal family being reptilian hybrids. The reason being due to some footage that surfaced online that showcased the queen being dressed in one of her cute outfits. But then all of a sudden, they zoom in on her eye and you see her eye looking completely creepy. Honestly, the footage is terrifying and I've watched enough horror movies in my life to recognize a demon when I see one and her eye looked just a tad bit demon-like. Apparently people have said that her eye was just bloodshot, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know about that excuse. They really should have said that she had some kind of eye disease because that I would believe. I've had a bloodshot, you know, probably at least plus 10 times in my life, and I've seen bloodshot eyes several times, and never have I ever seen anything that looks like that. Her entire eye is bloody looking, Honestly, it's as if perhaps someone punched her in the eye, except there's no swelling. It's very strange. So anyways, I see why people think she's possibly a shapeshifter. In our number nine spot, we have Katy Perry. Okay, this is some crazy footage, y'all. I have obviously heard of the theory that celebs are really just reptiles, but like, damn. Katy Perry? 
I love her. I don't want to believe it. You can't make me. Okay, but for real, even if she is a shapeshifter reptilian, is it possible that she's not a bad one? I say yes. Anyways, in this clip, we see Katy Perry's eye shift from blue to green and her pupils become slits for a second before she seemingly notices and looks away from the camera. Very sus, Katy. In our number eight spot, we have Dove Cameron. Dove Cameron is an actress and extremely talented singer, most notably known for her Disney Channel show Liv and Maddie and The Descendants. Her voice is angelic, and personally, I'm a big fan. But regardless of my feelings, people speculate that she is a shapeshifter, or that a shapeshifter has taken over her body one or the other. There is some recent footage of her doing an interview on the red carpet, and in this interview, she has a moment where it seems as if she shifts a little. When you zoom into her eyes, it appears as if, for a second, her eyes reveal her pupils suddenly turning into a slit just for a second, before turning back. It's really quite fast, but if you slow down the footage and zoom in closely, you can see it clear as day. So perhaps she has something weird going on with her eye, or perhaps she's actually a shapeshifter. Probably the latter. In our number seven spot, we have Beyonce. Many are very suspicious of Beyonce, apparently, and I had no idea. Apparently, she is one of the most suspicious of the Hollywood celebs that people are pretty certain is a shapeshifter reptile, and it's because of a few different shots of her that reveal some pretty wild things. Apparently, in one shot, you see Beyonce singing, and suddenly, the side of her face almost looks scaly. In another shot, Beyonce is dancing on stage and whipping her hair around, and for a millisecond, you can literally see her face transform into a demon. I'm not joking, it's terrifying, and it's probably real. <laughs> It's hard to believe her heavenly voice is even human, so most likely she's from out of this world. What do you think? Leave a comment in the comment section below. In our number six spot, we have Antique Roadshow Reptile. In this video, captured on camera, it is a regular episode of the BBC show, The Antiques Roadshow, when, in the background, the camera captured a man staring at the camera. His eyes appear pretty large, being opened quite wide, and if you zoom in, it looks as if his pupils have slits. His eyes resemble a snake's eyes, revealing that he is obviously a shape shifter snake. He doesn't appear to be with anyone, just hanging in the background, smirking at what he's observing. It's crazy to see this on camera, but I wonder if anyone has actually seen this in person. My suspicious brain would props not even believe anyone, even if they did claim that they saw this in real life. I'd be like, show me that proof, or oh, nothing. I'll, I'll just be sad. <laughs> In our number five spot, we have the MBC shapeshifter. In 1995, there was reportedly an MBC news reporter by the name of Isaiah Carey who was in the middle of filming when he allegedly swallowed a grasshopper. What's eerie about this video is that if you zoom in, you can observe him having an abnormally large, somewhat pointy tongue, and the color is slightly green. The reporter had a very big reaction, which I mean, if I swallowed a grasshopper, I would have screamed. <laughs> drama queen, but most people think that he turned away from the camera to hide his tongue, which does seem possible, but then again, no one wants to have something that gross documented on camera, so I would probably turn away too. Reptile or human? Probably reptile. In our number four spot, we have the Mexican schoolboy. In a video that was shared in September of 2018, there appears to be a boy and a girl, and a lot of chaos around them. Students leaving their seats, and a lot of hustle and bustle, when all of a sudden, the girl seems to turn into the boy, and the boy falls down and faints. She runs down the stairs, now as him, and then after 30 seconds on the ground, the boy, who's being approached by adults, he suddenly wakes up and begins to run at top speed away from the scene. Honestly, this one, to me, feels like it's straight out of a sci-fi show. I mean, at one part, it does look like it's filmed on a phone, but for the most part, it kind of gives me old Degrassi The Next Generation vibes, but maybe that's just me. Anyone else with me? But people say that it is real, and so all I have to say is that 
damn. Yep, that's all I've got. In our number three spot, we have the shape-shifting goat. In 2009, Nigerian police actually arrested a goat as apparently someone had shape-shifted into it. It was caught by vigilantes who were chasing two men who were trying to steal a Mazda car. They claimed that one of the two men escaped while the other used black magic to transform into a goat. Okay, this one wasn't caught on camera, but I thought you had to be told about this because I'm tripping out. Reported the police said one of them escaped and the other turned into a goat. We cannot confirm the theory, but the goat is in our custody. <laughs> This is the best one I've ever done. We cannot base our information on something mystical. It is something that has to be proved scientifically that a human being turned into a goat. Okay, so anyone else kinda hoping this story isn't true only because then the story is that a bunch of police arrested a goat? <laughs> Honestly, I'm good with either story being true. <laughs> In our number two spot, we have the alien security guard. In 2012, at the US-Israel Policy Conference, while President Obama was making a speech, there were cameras that were circulating around the area and they were shooting footage of the audience. From the front view, we see two security guards standing in the aisle. They look like, you know, they're most likely CIA agents. But then a camera shoots the security guards from behind and one of them in particular does not look human from behind, as well as the camera catches him looking completely different than he does from the front. We see a bald man with no ears and a pointy chin, his nose looks short and rounded, and his eyes appear to be dark and quite sunken in. Most people think that because it was so dark and crowded that people would have missed this, and that the camera caught this shapeshifter in a blip of a moment in its true form. Many have concluded from this footage that the US is in cahoots with an alien race. And at this point, I'm pretty convinced too. What do you think? In our number one spot, we have the alleyway shifter. Okay, this clip is crazy. This is footage of a person that goes into an alleyway that is semi-lit and stands still. And then what appears to be a dark shadow leaves its body and walks away and the person remains frozen. This clip is so controversial and has been a point of debate for some time now, but I'm not sure what you can even debate. You can clearly see someone or something leave the body and the body stays frozen in place. This clip is one of the most seemingly real clips out of everything I saw, but apparently all of the footage is real. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. At number 10, we have the Body Snatchers, an alien plant that invades Earth from space and only has one goal, to take over the planet, consume all the life, and then leave the planet dead as a doornail as the creature moves on to its next victim. The first time this monstrosity showed its face was in the book Body Snatchers in 1955. Since then, it has been transported to the silver screen again and again and again, with the most recent adaptation being in 2007 with the Nicole Kidman movie Invasion. The Body Snatchers are a plant from outer space. They release spores that infect people and put them into a deep sleep state. While they sleep, a duplicate is created that is in complete control of the body snatchers. The original is then disposed of, never to be seen again. The duplicate looks identical to the original in every way, right down to the scars. But the body snatchers have no connection to human emotion, which makes them a much deadlier enemy. They operate as a hive mind to take over an entire planet. It's safe to say by the time you find out the infection is real, it is too late. At number nine, we have the Terminator. Ah, uh, Arnold, baby, I'll be back. You are terminated. Hasta la vista, baby. These are all amazing lines that were born from the amazing movie series starring one of the greatest villains of all time, a nearly unstoppable machine from the future to change the course of history known as the Terminator. Now is the Terminator a monster? Of course he is. He's scary, he's dangerous, and he murders without any feeling. That's a monster. This killing machine for sure fits into this list. For those of you who don't know the Terminator, he is a robot sent from the future with one mission to kill people from the past so he can ensure the success of Skynet, which is the company who will make the artificial intelligence that develops the mind of the Terminator. There are several series of this bad boy. You got the classic T-800, who is the Terminator we all know and love. There is the T-1000, who is made up of a living metal like Mercury, who added out to kill you and can take the form of any person it encounters, duplicating their features and their voice. In the most recent Terminator movie, there's an alternate future which creates the Rev-9, the most advanced Terminator that the series has ever seen. It's half skeletal Terminator and the other half is like liquid Terminator, able to split both halves into two 
separate weapons and can hack the internet, duplicating anyone. Basically, if this thing comes to kill you, you're done for. At number eight, we have The Thing. Another movie classic. This is one of John Carpenter's best movies and every time I watch it, it literally creeps me out. There's something about real props that creeps the hell out of me. The Thing is an extremely resourceful creature. Through physical contact, it can spread from one person to another on a cellular level. The cells start to digest the host cells, creating new The Thing cells that will take over the body completely, making an exact duplicate of the host. The Thing is only able to copy organic material, so animals and people are its main targets. It also has the ability to shapeshift, grow claws, fangs, tentacles, and a whole bunch of weird stuff. It can consume enough organic material to grow into a massive monstrosity. Its weaknesses are fire, as it will burn every last cell, but you will have to make sure that you kill every last single one. If there's even just a little bit left, it can attach to a host and regrow. Also, it can survive extreme cold temperatures for an unknown amount of time, possibly forever. At number 7 we have the Skrull, one of the greatest villains of the Marvel Universe. The Skrull are an alien race that have the ability to shapeshift into other humanoids. They are masters of invasion and will take over entire planets with Skrulls, mimicking high ranking officials by stealing their memories and moving into their lives completely. Some people will be married to a Skrull, even have children with them and never know. Skrulls can also mimic superheroes powers. They will usually kidnap the people they replicate so they don't have the other version running around trying to blow their cover. One of the greatest scrolls ever, Super Scroll, has taken more than one power at a time, the entire Fantastic Four, into one body. At number six, we have Dracula. I mean, I don't really need to go into a deep breakdown onto who this guy is. He is the king of the vampires. He is the OG. He has been blending in with people and killing them since before it was cool. His powers have changed over again and again throughout time, but here are some of the more popular ones. He has super strength, super speed, and agility. The ability to seduce and hypnotize people through eye contact. He can turn into a horde of bats and fly into the darkness. And of course, his weaknesses are sunlight, a wooden stake, and sometimes crosses and he has a constant need to drink human blood. The legend of Dracula originally comes from the Romanian ruler Vlad the Impaler. He was known for his brutality. He would leave the bodies of impaled men outside his castle to scare off invading armies, and it's said that he would dip his bread in the blood of his victims. At number five, we have Replicants, a questionable villain from the movie Blade Runner. Replicants are human-like slaves that are grown in a lab for service purposes. They are all given expiry dates, and they are supposed to serve one purpose and that's it, which is usually some hard labor. Some of them go rogue and then are taken down by Blade Runners, who are basically cops who hunt down replicants. The only way you can tell the difference between a real person and a replicant is through the Vaud Kampf test. This one is questionable because replicants only rebel because they want to live, but they also kill a bunch of people in the process, so it's kind of a gray area. At number four, we have Martian Manhunter, one of the greatest to come out of the DC universe. Martian Manhunter is one of the most powerful heroes to work with the Justice League in the never ending battle against evil. Now, anyone who knows the character knows that he's a hero and probably shouldn't be on a list of scary monsters, but let me just break him down for a minute and give you my reasons why. Let's get into his powers first. He has super strength, flight, shape shifting, telekinesis, mind reading, intangibility, durability, regeneration, extrasensory input, and in some instances, heat vision. He is by far one of the most powerful creatures in the DC universe, with Superman once saying, I can count on one hand the number of known beings in the universe that I would be afraid to face in combat. And John Johns, the Martian Manhunter, is at the top of the list. Superman said he's afraid of this dude. That means he's someone to be feared. If he was ever to go rogue, it could be the end of the world as we know it. At number three, we have She Mantis. In the television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we see all sorts of strange supernatural creatures that always have new ways of trying to kill the protagonist and her friends. Now, in the episode Teacher's Pet, we saw the writers take the teacher seducing the student fantasy and turn it on its head. One of the main characters, Xander, has a new teacher, and she is a bombshell, Miss Natalia French, and she starts to pull him in with their sultry ways. I have to admit, if I was in this position, I would fall for the same thing. Throughout the episode, we see her seduce him more and more. Xander is totally into it, while Buffy and the rest of the gang is a little suspicious. Eventually, Miss French invites Xander over so they can work on a school project. He arrives there, and just as things are about to get hot and heavy, she drugs him and then drags him into the basement, ties him up, and it's revealed that she's actually a giant praying mantis that has the ability to shapeshift into a human. 
Now she has Xander as her prisoner and she's going to use him as food and a tool to reproduce. Luckily Buffy and the rest of the crew come to save the day. Xander is saved but probably will never trust a woman again. At number two, we have reptilian shapeshifters. This is the conspiracy theory that popped off before all conspiracy theories were mainstream. They were the brainchild of author and former sports broadcaster David Icke. Now they sound like something that would be pulled out of a science fiction novel, but Icke insists that they are real. He claims that reptilian shapeshifters called Anunnaki have been in control of mankind for centuries and are embedded in every high level power on the planet. He may claims that the entire royal family is reptilian pretending to be a person and they want nothing more than to eat our bodies and watch us suffer. He says that they've orchestrated all major disasters in the world and he has claimed that he's seen glimpses of them transform in person. The Anunnaki are the backbone of every shadow government like the Illuminati and all the other ones. And they continue to control the world and manipulate humanity unless someone does something about it. I'm gonna pass on unveiling this one and just sit on my couch eating ice cream. That's what I'm gonna do. And for the number one spot we have Zeus. Wait, what? Why would you put the Greek god of the skies on a list of monsters pretending to be humans? Well, for one, Zeus has transformed into a person before, mostly to try and seduce women, and he's actually a monster. Just because he lives up in the clouds doesn't mean he's a nice guy, like he's a monster inside his soul. Let's break down some of the horrible things that Zeus has done. He has always been a fan of incest, which isn't super weird among the gods, but still not very cool. He once killed his wife so he could marry another lady who was the goddess Hera. And then once he was married to Hera, he cheated on her all the time. He once turned into a swan and then raped a lady. And on top of all that, he sentenced the Titan Prometheus to have his liver eaten out by an eagle every day for eternity. Prometheus is immortal, so it'd regenerate and then it would come eat his liver out again. This is all because Prometheus gave fire to people because he was a good dude. Literally, an eagle flies down every day to eat the guy's liver. And the next day it regenerates and it starts again. And on top of that, he's the one who gave Pandora's box to Pandora so she opened it and unleashed all the evil in the world. But Zeus is the one who gave Pandora an unrelenting need of curiosity so he knew she would open the box and unleash evil in the world. So, pretty bad dude. Starting us off with number 10 are the Ash Bullets. This one's from a native Navajo who is coming back from the Navajo Nation fair with his family and grandmother. How many times am I gonna say Navajo in this video, I swear. The conversation somehow got into skinwalkers but his grandma shut it down pretty quickly. That night as he was just in bed he heard something moving outside his house. Thinking it was a stray dog or something he didn't think much of it but then he heard the loudest distorted scream shat himself then ran downstairs and woke up his mum. They looked outside the window and saw this coyote thing limping towards the door dragging his right leg as he did. It started scratching at the door and moaning and all his parents could do was shout words and Navajo added telling it it wasn't well Welcome there. At this point, everyone in the house was awake and panicked, but his granddad knew exactly what to do. He went and got a handgun from a drawer and a bag of ashes. I don't know where he got this bag of ashes from, but he did. And he coated the bullets in it and loaded the gun. He went to the door shouting Navajo words and then opened the door and fired twice, but the thing escaped unscathed. His granddad turned around and said, That's the fastest one I've ever seen. So he's a pro veteran at this, clearly. It was about 4 a.m. by the time everyone everyone actually calmed down and the family actually went to a medicine man the next day to be blessed against the skinwalker. Coming in at number 9 is The Chase. So this one's from a cop called JG Buckland and he recalled how he was once working the night shift at a hotel in New Mexico. He was patrolling the hotel in his car when he decided to take a nap, just what I like to hear from the cop. A bit after 2am something hit the bottom of his car so hard it actually swayed. Mind you this was a 1978 Thunderbird so it was a big heavy car. I mean it's not easy to make it move. JG woke up and drove forward and saw there was a dog sort of thing sitting where his car had been. But as he started looking at it, he felt like he was drowning in this dark energy and that this thing was just pure evil. The face of the dog had human features, mostly the eyes, but it didn't have a snout nose. That bit also looked more human and it wasn't black tipped like a dog's nose. Size wise, it was slightly bigger than an adult German Shepherd, which are pretty big in and of itself. With this in mind, JG decided to hit the dog with his car, but it ran off the property but then back onto the property so he started driving after it. It made its way into a third parking lot and then into a weedy area and at this point JG was chasing it on foot with his gun. It came up and threw him aside like he was made of air and then ran away. This thing ran into the weedy area on four legs and exited on two. So the dog was now a nude man that was screaming as it left and after 
after that encounter, JG had such bad luck, health problems, etc. After this, so he actually went to a shaman to get cleansed from this experience. And I want to be cleansed from telling the story. At number eight, we have the lookalikes. This one's from Redditor Jibby Jam One, who was in New Mexico exploring some old Spanish ruins with some friends. While they were at one of the sites at night, they suddenly heard an angry, ear piercing, blood curdling scream, which prompted them to want to get the hell out of there. They went back to their camp, and a while later, the user went for a piss about 300 meters from the camp, and this is where things got weird. He remembered seeing two dust devils coming towards him, but when he turned around, it was just two of his friends who were motioning him to follow them, which he did almost like he was being sucked into doing so. He followed his friends for like 10 15 minutes, but as he was snapping back to reality, he realized these weren't his friends at all. His friends had bright red hair, and these two people's faces were identical to his friends', but they both had cat like eyes and were brunette. He stopped in his tracks and they turned to look at him as if they were about to kill him on the spot. He ran in a full sprint back to the camp where his friends hadn't even realized. Realized he was gone. Great friends you have, by the way. And he told them what had happened, and they packed the hell up and drove back to Albuquerque. Filling our number seven slot is the delivery trip. This one's from Reddit user Neptune420, whose dad ran a small delivery service in Farmington, New Mexico. One day they got a delivery for Window Rock, Arizona, on the Navajo reservation, and the dad decided to take his Navajo friend Travis and his girlfriend with him as they wanted to see some family there. So they took two separate trucks and had walkie-talkies with them so they could communicate between vehicles. The trip and delivery went fine, they had a great day, but then on their way back, that was when things really took a turn for the worst. They're driving towards a hill and as they crest it, the dad sees what he thinks is a giant dog sitting on its haunches in the middle of the road facing away from them. He walkies his friend Travis in the other car asking if he sees the dog, to which Travis replies, that is not a dog, speed up right now and hit it. Hysterically, he went on and said, hit it, JJ, you have to hit it. Please, please hit that thing right now. So the dad speeds up, and as they get closer, they see the dog's matted hair seems to have dried blood all over it. And just before they hit it, it turned around to reveal that it had a face. The face was a hybrid between a bear and a human, but it looked distorted and in pain. And as soon as they hit it, it screamed like it was drowning and then ran into the nearby field. They saw a cop a little while later, and Travis made them pull over and was completely on edge when he told the officer that they saw a skinwalker a few miles back and it had been following them. The officer who was Navajo himself turned white, stammered something unintelligible and then got into his car and left. Very helpful. But what I took away from the story is the fact that the dad, no questions asked, just hit this thing. Like he didn't even question Travis, like, oh, why should I hit that dog? He just went from zero to 100 real quick, fast and furious, real quick. Now, at number six is the walking coyote. Now, this one's from Reddit at Endelos, who said during the early 80s, her sister was on the way back from a friend's at night when her car broke down. Thankfully, she broke down in front of a family friend's house, so she went in and called her dad, and he came to get her. They were driving back at around 10 p.m. and were passing a heavily wooded area when out of nowhere they hear an incredibly loud inhuman scream. The user's dad hit the brakes just in time to see a six foot tall coyote with a black and white striped tail walking on just two legs. Thankfully I don't think the sister or dad were its true targets because it disappeared quite quickly after that but then they heard the same scream again only 10 times louder than the first time. This time the dad didn't break, he accelerated out of that situation a sap. Coming in at number five is The Running Man. This one's from Brent Swanson, and funnily enough, it also took place near Window Rock, Arizona. He was driving on the highway at night when he saw what seemed to be a large coyote sitting in the middle of the road. He slowed down so he wouldn't hit it, unlike that other user's dad, and he found that the coyote wasn't scared of the car at all. It didn't even move a muscle when Brent honked at it, so he just decided to save himself the trouble and drive around it. As he drove away, his dad turned to him and went with would you look at that? And he was referring to the coyote who was now chasing behind the car. The coyote then matched the speed of the car running right alongside it, and then out of nowhere, the coyote becomes a naked running man, still keeping pace with the car, mind you. The man started slapping the car while having the creepiest grin on his face. Like, I can just imagine that, and it, I just, I just don't want to. 
I don't imagine it anymore. At this point, they're going like 50 miles per hour, but he's still there. To end his pursuit, the man let out a loud wail and then swerved away. Either way, Brent and his dad were terrified, and I would have been too, but for some reason, I really can't shake the image that this naked man looked like the guy who plays Aquaman. I don't know why, it's just in my head. <laughs> At number four is the party. This one's from Redditor Trey underscore lightning, who said that anytime his mum would take him to her hometown on the reservation, she'd always tell him a skinwalker story. But this particular one was told to him by his aunt. Now back in the day, his aunt and her friends used to party a lot, and one day they got in a van, drove out to the boondocks, and just drank. A bit after sunset, everyone was laughing and in good spirits when they heard what sounded like rocks being thrown at the van. The sound stopped, but then an even bigger sound followed, and they quickly realized someone or something had just jumped onto the roof of the van. They locked all the, they lock all the doors, and his aunt is in the driver's seat trying to start the engine, but obviously it doesn't start, like in every horror movie ever. Such timely engine failure, I swear. But anyway, the thing on the roof is still banging on the van, and then his aunt sees a hand with the long nails reach over the roof and start scratching the windshield. Then it jumps off and walks up to her window and just stares at her. And his poor little aunt at this point is just praying for her life, but then after a few minutes of panicking, screaming, and staring, the thing leaves them and the van finally starts miraculously bang on time and they leave. Filling our number three slot is the white powder. This one comes from an anonymous Navajo woman living in Shiprock, New Mexico. She said during one of her visits home, she heard her dogs relentlessly barking at something outside and then she heard a loud thud above her on the roof. Her sisters got quite scared and her parents assured her it was just a dog or a cat and just to go to sleep. Parents really need to stop telling us it's just a cat or a dog because clearly, as we've seen, it's not. But anyway, the dogs were continually barking and running back and forth and then she heard a metal pole hit one of the dogs and she knew it was a pole because her sister had put it on the roof the day before. She tried to get up but fell into a deep sleep and the last thing she heard were human footsteps on the roof. The next day, there was nothing suspicious on the roof or around but her cousin did complain about her head hurting and the next day, she straight up died, just like that. They brought a medicine man to conduct a ceremony and he said that two of you know exactly what happened. He went on to say it was a man in bare skin on the roof of the house and he was using a hummingbird as a lookout and a helper and he blew white powder onto the woman's cousin which is why she died but that was also the reason why everyone in the house fell into a deep sleep that night. The ceremony went on and the woman later found out that the powder used was crushed human bones taken from graveyards. As if the story wasn't screwed up enough. Now at number two is The Herd. This one's also from Reddit and Navajo Joe, which is quite fitting, I guess. But when he was a kid, him and his uncle were on their way back from chopping and gathering firewood. They were going slow on this dirt road and Joe just had this feeling he was being watched and he was about to look out his window when his uncle shouted, don't. He then heard three taps on his window as his heart literally felt like it had stopped beating. His uncle started praying and going faster and he thought all was okay, but then the truck dipped from the bed. At this point, his uncle just kept saying, look at me, don't turn away, just look at me, please, and he heard the tapping again. Joe was now crying at this point as the truck dipped for the second and third time. Finally, his uncle gave a sigh of relief and said they'd both need prayers in the morning so the evil would forget their faces. When they got home, Joe called his uncle a while later because he had had a nightmare. His uncle said he didn't see any faces, just eyes, like they were just lights on the road. Joe asked him why he didn't just slam on the brakes when it was in the back and his uncle replied saying because it wasn't alone. When I read that the first time, it legit just gave me shivers. Like how can you end a story like that because it wasn't alone? That's a great. And finally, at number one is The Thing. So this one, again, is from Joe, and he lived on the reservation when the story took place. He was home with his two brothers and dogs one night when they started making a lot of noise outside. People, you have to trust your dogs when they're barking at stuff outside. It's probably a skinwalker. In the middle of the night, Joe and his brother woke up because the barking started again. He went outside and saw that one of the dogs was just losing it near the truck. When he looked there, there was a really tall man there looking at the dog and then kicking it. When it looked up, it had a pure white face, a pure black smile, and red burning eyes. It came to him and towered over him, and all Joe could see was a deep red. Things are clearly not going well at this point. His brother finally came out of the house, not knowing what was going on, and at this stage, the thing's hands were inches away from Joe's head. From what he could recall, its skin was black, and it smelt like a bloated dead animal, and he was just stood there, unable to move or speak. The skinwalker let him be, and went for his brother and 
said, which is what finally broke Joe out of this trance and made him really angry. He started baring his teeth at it and growling in a way he didn't even know he could do. He kept roaring at it while it smiled back at him, and his smile faded the angrier Joe got, and then he just ran away into the night. That's it. No murder, no clawing at the face, just ran away into the night. Number 10. Mothman. So the Mothman is this uh, big old flying dude with wings and red eyes. Floats around and you know what? Boo! Mothman sucks. Look, okay, I grew up in the area where this cryptid supposedly like haunted and you know what? Yeah, I did see him. You know, big old spooky red eyes flying around doing whatever. Oh no, he was near a bridge when it collapsed. He precipitated a disaster. Ugh. The only thing that actually happened to me when I saw him was this my house flooded. I failed all my final tests and my girlfriend broke broke up with me. I mean, who even cares, right? God, Mothman is such a loser. Oh, I'm a big scary moth. Look at me. Oh, I'm mothing it up. Oh. No, I'm not better. Shut up. Number 9. Demon Cat. Good old Demon Cat. Making its home in Washington DC, this fiendish feline is known to stalk the White House and the United States Capitol building. Supposedly in the 1800s, cats were brought to the Capitol building as a means of combating the rat problem. And while they couldn't get all the politicians, some legends claim that one cat remained stalking the basements. It can only be seen prior to elections and other tragedies in Washington, supposedly having been seen before the assassinations of JFK. K and Lincoln. Why has this kitty stuck itself in the minds of those who have seen it? Well, apparently, when spotted, this cat actually grows to massive proportions, leaping at its viewer before just vanishing. Now, some blame the Capitol Police Force's poor screening for alcoholics at the source of this misunderstanding, as when viewed from the floor, anything might appear large. But as one guard was apparently taken by a heart attack upon seeing the categorical size of such the beast, who can really say for sure. Number 8. Sewer Alligators Taking a big old bite out of the big old apple are our guys in green. The Sewer Gators. According to the New York Times, there's actually a massive problem with folks trying to keep alligators as pets within the city. But as for the ones that aren't caught, what might happen to their pets once they've outgrown their owners? Now legend has it that in the 1930s an infestation began, gators making their home within New York's stinky subsystems. Supposedly, they've clashed with the NYPD, who claimed to have vanished their bescaled opponents, though sightings have continued throughout the modern days. Likely their greatest impact was the inspiration for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, though I might just be making that up. Number 7. The Honey Island Swamp Monster Better known as Le Bête Noir, this humanoid horror is reported to be located within the Honey Island Swamp in Louisiana. Described as walking on two legs and seven feet tall, Le Bête Noir is reported to be preceded by a foul odor. Now, casts have been taken of its feet, showing a total of four toes, which indicates that it may not be related to humans or apes. As some legends claim that a crashed circus train may have allowed for a band of chimpanzees to escape into the wild, where they probably adapted to their environment and fell into legend. Knowing how circuses generally treat their animals, eh, good for them. Number 6. Lava Bear Discovered in the area surrounding South Central Oregon, the lava bears are a group of extremely small bears that have been observed emerging from the lava beds common to the area. Several hunters have claimed to have caught these ferocious beasts, which initially appeared to be bear cubs, but were in fact fully grown adults. Once news of this made rounds, the hunt for the bears was on, and in 1923, one was caught by a US Forest Service trapper by the name of Alfred Andrews. Andrews was offered a reward for the bear's body, but turned it down in favor of parading it around the country, making quite a chunk of change on the side, until his partner stole the bear and vanished. Uh, several other bears have been captured, and in 1924, one of the local high schools decided that its mascot would become the lava bear. It is also still their mascot. Seriously. Number 5. The Black Dog yeah, I put this in here to contrast the demon cat because I, you know, think they should be friends. The black dog is a demonic creature originating in Europe, most famously in the story The Hound of the Baskervilles, but it's also been studied in the States. A beast with burning red eyes, W.H.C. Pynchon wrote, If you meet the black dog once, it shall be for joy. If twice, 
it shall be for sorrow, and the third time shall bring death. Demonic dogs have been spotted in Connecticut and Massachusetts, and truckers have a saying where if you see one, it's time to pull over or a crash will be the least of your concerns. Number 4. Ludwig the Bloodsucker Back to New York, and it turns out that gators aren't the only things looking to take a bite out of streetwalkers. Described as a 3 foot tall German man, Ludwig the Bloodsucker is reported to be a local vampire. Now, Legends claim that he was too minute to take down a German man, and too ugly to seduce a German woman, so he just booked it over to the states for easier pickings. Haunting the Bowery Street, several victims were left alive, but incessantly mocked by the vampire, usually for their drunken stupor. Local newspapers reported about the man's habits, locating him as a German tailor by day. There are apparently even interviews where he goes on record to claim that blood is healthy and good eating. Mixed with the way that immigrants were treated at the time, I doubt that went over well. Number 3. Two-Toed Tom Listen, there's a lot of gators in the states, but Two-Toed Tom might be the most famous. The story goes that this 14-foot alligator could be identified for having lost all but two toes to a trap, and would eat farmers and their livestock. Now, Fed up with the beast, many brave men would band together to hunt the reptile, but whether it was ex-military marksmen or dynamite brandishing pharmacers, none could destroy this devil. Bored with Alabama, the gator was reported to have left its hunting grounds, apparently settling for Florida, where there would be more failed attempts to take down two toes. Fifty years later, a series of two toed tracks were discovered near his old hunting ground, and the legend of two toed Tom marches on. Number 2. Hodag Now, this strange creature made its home in Wisconsin, described as possessing the head of a frog, the face of an elephant, short legs with massive claws, the back of a dinosaur, and a long spiked tail. Reported by land surveyor and trusted member of the community, Eugene Shepard, he rounded up a group of brave hunters to capture the beast, an attempt which apparently required the usage of dynamite. Sending a picture of its remains to the media, they declared the safety of its primary food source for all time to come, the White Bulldog. Thank goodness that the White Bulldog may now roam Wisconsin once more. Alright, fine, it was a big hoax, and it was a really good one. Good enough that the local town decided to build a statue in honor of the beast. They also hold a festival in its name, which I've actually been to, but the effort that went into this hoax was actually quite extensive. And when Shepard had claimed to capture the creature, he even displayed it using a puppet show, piloting a wooden facsimile of the beast. Number 1. The Jersey Devil Ah, here's a real classic, the Jersey Devil. Known for living in… Uh, Jersey. Well, ok, taste and location aside, this creature is a sight to behold, a horse-like demon with bat wings and a forked tail. It was apparently born human, the 13th offspring of Mother Jane Lee who had cursed the unborn upon discovery of her pregnancy. Once born, the demon was revealed in all its horror, and gave everyone in the room a highly motivated beatdown before yeeting itself up and out the chimney. There have been sightings of this creature throughout history, one of the most notable viewers being Napoleon's brother. Seriously. This creature has also been reported to be capable of surviving direct cannon fire, and in 1909 there were a slew of sightings which set off a search for the fabled devil. A search which mostly ended in vain, even though there was a $10,000 reward that was promised for live capture. And of course, someone then tried to submit a kangaroo with fake claws and bat wings. Hmm. Anyways, it's just another reason not to go to Jersey, and it's just about as good of one as any. Starting our list off at number 10, The Red Door. Ok, if you're a fan of Haunting of Hill House, this first one here should uh, tickle your fancy. Here we go, I'm terrified already. This is some hospital footage because, you know, why not? This video starts off with a flickering light, but as the person filming walks down the hallway, the door at the end begins to open and close repeatedly. Huh, like this, check it out. Now once they reach said red door that was opening and you know, slamming shut, they realize nothing is there and it doesn't really go anywhere. The door just leads to pipes, like water supply pipes in case of emergencies, you know what I mean? So they're inspecting it to see what have caused the opening and closing when they began to hear banging coming from another door further down the hallway. And then of course, like Looney Tunes, they go and check out that one as well. When they check it out, they find nothing and nobody. Honestly you guys, when I saw the door at the end, when it didn't lead anywhere, I was upset. I was like, oh someone's faking it, maybe someone's there, you know, doing something on the other side. Nope, just terrifying. There we go. Number 9. 
historic home tape. No, not one of those home tapes, you freaks. That's. Oh my God. I'm not exactly sure what happened or who these people are, but something's something's going on in here. You know what? I'm tapping out. Let's move on. Number eight, Barton Mansion Ghost. This video is from 2001. Somebody explored through the Barton Mansion in California because, like I said earlier, some people like doing that for some reason. This mansion is said to be the home of tons of sinister happenings, satanic rituals, paranormal activity. It's even said that a demon haunts the top floor. It's kind of cool though, demon haunting the top floor. He's like, ah, I shot to the top bunk, and then just floats around. It's said that the night before this video was taken, a group had broken into the abandoned basement, and there they found a creepy configuration of stones surrounding a piece of meat. They came back the next day to take some more video footage of the place, and the part of the video that I wanted to show you is basically a first person view as somebody explores through said mansion. And it's when they spot something that none of us wanted to see, and that's when all hell breaks loose. Here we go. What exactly did he see there? I have no idea. If you have any ideas, put in the comments down below because I won't be able to sleep. Great. Number seven, clown sightings. This footage comes again from another home surveillance camera and I feel like these things always catch the creepiest happenings. I just did a doorbell camera video where the dude's licking the guy's doorbell. That's the worst thing I've seen in ages. This time, when the homeowner went to check their footage, they were greeted by an extremely creepy clown. Yeah, I'm not sure if you remember years back when there was like a clown craze. Everyone just wanted to be clowns for some reason and hang out next to the highway. That was weird. I'm hoping that's where this video comes from, but again, there's no explanation. So we just gotta dive in and wonder. Grabs a pumpkin and then tears it apart. The clown stares awkwardly at the camera before disappearing into the darkness. I like that the reporter commented that the clown looked awkward at the camera before leaving. Yeah, awkward. That's for sure the word I would use for this encounter. Awkward, not terrifying. Number six, blockbuster ghost. Oh, a, a classic. For those of you who don't know, before the age of streaming and you know, LimeWire, Netflix, all that amazing technology, we had to go to a store with our legs and our families. We had to put on our winter coats to go rent a movie. And sometimes we got there and there was only wide screens left of said movie. That was always the worst. You're like, ah, oh, I guess. I would go in and hide a video sometimes and then come back with my family, we'd find it, and then rent it. Now, as many good memories that rest there in Blockbuster, there's also some haunting ones. This surveillance camera footage shows an employee, after closing, restocking some of the shelves in the store, and then they notice something flying off one shelf while they're stocking it. And when he finishes stocking one shelf, he moves on to the next, but one video on the shelf he just worked on immediately falls off. Okay, maybe he put the video on the shelf in a you know awkward angle. It was in a tight 45, maybe it was one of those, and it kind of slipped down. It happens. But when he walks away, it flies off the shelf again. Now, at this point, I would have already dipped. I would have signed out, maybe even quit my job. Who knows? But he goes back, picks the video up, and he walks away again, but this time a video on the other shelf falls down right in front of him, and then as he reaches to pick that video up, another video falls, and then a third one falls. And then he understandably runs off after that. That's just, I, I, yeah, to be honest, at that point, I would leave. I would leave after the first video fell, if I'm being honest. Number five, witch caught on tape. I am terrified of witches. I don't like this one. Okay. This video comes from Mexico and it's said to be a sighting of a witch flying through the air. I love this video. I saw this long before I started working here and it's been red free, just sitting right in there. I don't like how slow she's going too. Like she's not in any rush. The people who recorded the video said they could see the figure wearing a cape, which is why of course we all assume that it's a witch. And also she's flying through the air, so there's that too. Just to add another layer of huh to this already kind of weird video, police officers from the area also explained that they had seen some sort of witch-like creature before this footage was even captured. They said they saw some sort of creature dressed in all black with huge claws and it had their head hanging down low. Like, imagine a police officer, I'd be like, what? go get that thing then. What, what are you talking about? Is that a gargoyle? I've seen Lord of the Rings. Can we close the city? That's terrifying. That's a demigorgon. Number four, creeper in the back. 
not creeper in the front. That's a, that's a different video. This is creeper in the back. Here we go. With so much of the world working from home and needing to do Zoom calls all the time and now we're just comfortable and no one wants to go back to the office so we're just gonna keep doing it forever, I guess. After you see this clip, you're gonna be looking over your shoulder every time you're in a meeting in the future. Yeah, you don't want anything like that creeping around your house at any point. When you're looking or not looking, honestly. The sad part is that guy looked like he was having a good time. Maybe he got a promotion on this Zoom call, you know? Whatever was going on, he was loving it until, you know, the scary demon apparatus cloud monster thing appeared, of course. Then it kind of went downhill. Now I don't know what the aftermath is of this video, so if you want peace or sleep tonight, I can't help you. I'm not the guy for you. I just report the videos and go, that's scary. Next. Number three, the clip. This is a video that's titled Clip 95 MP4. And after watching it, honestly, I'm good with the other 94, to be honest. I wish I could explain to you guys what's going on in this video, but again, like the rest of them, I have no idea. That's why I included them. They're really baffling. It's a weirdly put together VHS tape montage, whatever, that features some strange looking people and masks. A weird thing that maybe looks like a clock and then a whole bunch of, it's just, it's just bad vibes. You know, Chris, just bad vibes going on. It's just not the mood for us. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to find out, again, like the rest. I don't know what's going on with the clock symbolism here either. It's very specific. I feel like I'm late watching this video. Like I have like the anxiety going on now. Number two, the chair. Not to be confused with the WWE wrestling move, the chair. This is a uh, way, way less fun, this one. I grew up watching the big comfy couch. I love comfy couches and comfy chairs. I'll sit on both all day long. A rocking chair as an adult? I'll be asleep in minutes, I love this. Except for when it's haunted and it just rocks by itself. Then in that case, I don't want to buy that. No thank you. This is a video of exactly that. It's a chair that is said to have been purchased, used just a couple of days prior. And huh, let me tell you, I hope they kept a receipt. My grandma had a rocking chair and she said that it would move on its own from time to time. Isn't that terrifying? My grandma told me that when I was like eight. And finally, number one, VHS for sale. This VHS tape was found at an estate sale that was being held in a barn. Now the person who uploaded this tape found them in 10 boxes that they had purchased amongst you know other things such as records, rusted tools, old paint cans, just borderline garbage and they're like, ah yes, I'll paint it a different color and sell it for a dollar more and then, you know, sure. This video shows somebody walking through some sort of mildly wooded area in the daytime, which okay, yeah, fine, that's all great and dandy, but then it cuts to a night scene immediately and that's when the uncomfortable feelings start to rise up. That's when I feel like I'm gonna throw up on my keyboard watching this video. I have absolutely no idea what the white thing being dragged is, but hey, guess what? I don't wanna find out. There we go, what a fun list that was. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the mysterious beam. Pretty recently, scientists explained that they captured a mysterious beam of energy that was coming from the star that is the closest known star to the sun, Proxima Centauri. This star is small and low mass and is located around 4.2 light years away from us. The thing about this star is that it has one rocky exoplanet that is 17% larger than Earth in its habitable zone, which would make liquid water a possibility on the planet. This planet's habitability has been disputed throughout the years, but this signal could be a sign that it may be even more habitable than any of us know. Scientists explained that the signal shifted while it was being observed, which mimicked the shift caused by a movement of a planet. They're taking extra precautions to figure out what exactly caused this shift in case it was some sort of mundane source. It will, of course, take some time to figure out, but it's all very exciting. In our number nine spot today, we have the Venus cloud. Last year in September of 2020, astrobiologists everywhere were excited and skeptical of some new potential evidence that had been found in the upper clouds of Venus. Firstly, can we just take a second to really think about how cool of a job an astrobiologist has? Anyway, the new findings were pointing to the potential of the presence of phosphine in the clouds. Phosphine is a rare and usually poisonous gas that on Earth is basically always met with the presence of living organisms. Venus hasn't really been top of the list of choices for finding potential life due to its surface temperature and pressure and the sulfuric acid clouds but this evidence could prove to say something otherwise. Two separate telescopes were able to pick up the signatures of phosphine in a cloud that had a similar temperature and pressure to Earth. And while this isn't concrete evidence of space bugs, it will at least be a reminder that we should be continuing to look for life even in the most unlikely places. And hey, maybe it is space bugs. 
In our number eight spot today, we have Uma Uma. Okay, so this is one piece of evidence that actually has scientists fighting over what is going on with it. So a few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system and they called it Uma Uma and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. But upon closer examination, they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate and this is when the debate started because they just don't know why. Avi Loeb, who's a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. But in August of last year, Avi wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what's going on behind this one. In our number seven spot today, we have the NASA Viking experiment. This is one of the more debated ones on today's list, but that does not mean it isn't evidence. In 1976, NASA's Viking landers tested the soil on Mars and found some chemicals that could be attributed to signs of life. The soil was mixed with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients and then tested for the production of radioactive methane gas. The test ended up receiving a positive result, which could indicate that something in the soil is metabolizing the nutrients to produce the gas. Despite further efforts, there still hasn't been any life found, but one of the scientists who worked on this original project and others as well stand by what they found and argued that the technology at the time wasn't advanced enough to find the key evidence of life. Hopefully with the new Perseverance rover that landed recently, we'll be able to find the signs on Mars that we have been looking for. In our number six spot today, we have black holes. When we think of black holes, we usually think of how absolutely terrifying they are, but that may be changing. There has actually been the discovery of a planet that is floating around a black hole. The forces around the hole are also providing heat for the planet as well, but there is one catch, and that is the fact that the planet needs to orbit at the speed of light. This would mean that a second on that planet would be hours on ours, which is kind of difficult to comprehend. The planet would have to be in what is called the Goldilocks zone though, because if it's too far from the black hole, it'll be too cold and there won't be any liquid water, but if it's too close, it will of course be sucked into the black hole by the gravitational forces. It's definitely a pretty crazy idea, but it is possible that there could be some life in this situation. In our number five spot today, we have fossilized microbes. Another piece of controversial evidence that came from Mars was announced in 1996. NASA scientists announced that they had potentially found what appeared maybe fossilized microbes in a lump of Martian rock. It is likely that this rock came off during some sort of Mars collision and just casually floated around the solar system for 15 million years before landing in Antarctica in 1984. Just casual space stuff. After analyzing the rock, it was revealed that it contained organic molecules and small specks of mineral magnetite, which is sometimes found in the bacteria on Earth. And upon further analysis with an electron microscope, it was claimed that there were signs of nanobacteria. Since then, some claim that the magnetite wasn't that similar to those found in bacteria, and there is a belief that the signs of nanobacteria could have been grown in a lab. In our number four spot today, we have UFO footage. Remember last year when the Navy released footage of UFOs, but we were in a global pandemic, so we didn't really have time to freak out about it? Well, let's freak out about it now, because what the heck was captured on those videos? The US Navy released footage last year where they had captured video of some sort of wingless aircraft that was traveling at hypersonic speed. Of course, people are wary to believe that this is true signs of alien life and alien visitors, but the thing is, we simply just don't really know what this is. We know it's not something that is known to us yet, so this could definitely be a sign of some sort of alien life, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see. In our number three spot today, we have this bacterial experiment. So we've talked a bit on today's list about how we tend to think of life only being able to exist on other planets that are similar to ours with a similar atmosphere within a certain distance of a star, but we've also discussed how this more narrow thinking might not be the best scenario. On Earth, most living creatures require oxygen to live, but the problem with a lot of planets is that there's far more hydrogen and helium. Last year, scientists decided to take two different bacteria. One was E. coli, which can be found in the guts of humans, and ordinary yeast, which is used in things like bread and beer. 
With these two bacteria, they tried to see if they could live in different environments. When placed within flasks that contained either pure hydrogen or pure helium, they still managed to grow, just at a slower pace. This evidence goes to show that there might be living organisms that we haven't found yet because we are just looking in the wrong places. In our number two spot today, we have the fact that they might have died off. This one is a bit disappointing to be honest, but it basically is just a theory that it's probably pretty likely that there were aliens at some point, but since the universe is so old, they might have already died out. All life and cultures rise and fall, and researchers put together a model last year that would give more insight into the likelihood of this theory. They took things into account like sun-like stars that are not too close or too far from planets that are similar to Earth, as well as how frequently there are deadly radiation blasting supernovas, which of course would prove to be a huge problem for life forms, as well as the time that it takes for intelligent life to evolve, provided all the conditions are right. And once the evolution has taken place, how long would it take for a tool-bearing form of life to then destroy itself? That's a lot of factors to consider, and through all of this, it was found that the highest likelihood of life before ours in the Milky Way emerged around five and a half billion years ago, which would place that before our planet was even formed. This, of course, would have provided plenty of time for all of the events I just mentioned to have occurred. I hope this one isn't true, because I really do hope that there are aliens out there. In our number one spot today, we have Europa. One of Jupiter's moons called Europa has a red tinge to it, and in 2001, NASA scientists revealed that it's possible that alien microbes might be responsible for the red color. The surface of the moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and compounds to make the data make sense. There are some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions and that also have a red and brown color, which could potentially be responsible for the color on this moon. The surface this temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where they are located. Some geological activity on the moon could then push them closer to the surface, where they are then flash frozen in place. Mm -hmm. 